the boundary conditions in magnetostatics. What are boundary conditions and what is the purpose of finding out them? In a homogeneous media, the electromagnetic quantities may vary smoothly and continuously. But that will not be the case when we have dissimilar media. At the boundary between dissimilar media, the electromagnetic quantities may be discontinuous. The continuities and discontinuities in fields can be described mathematically by the boundary conditions and these are used to constrain solutions for fields away from these boundaries. We shall now try to understand the boundary conditions that are satisfied by magnetic fields when they encounter dissimilar media. Let us assume that we have placed a surface having a surface current density k in a homogeneous media. Let us assume that a magnetic field is traversing the sheet carrying the surface current density k. Below the sheet, let us assume that the magnetic field is oriented like this. We may resolve the magnetic field into two components that is a parallel component and a perpendicular component. We may denote the parallel component as B parallel and to denote that it is below the surface, we shall add that in the subscript. Now the perpendicular component is B perpendicular below the surface. Let us assume that the field existing at the top surface of the charge carrying sheet is B above. This can again be resolved into two components that is B parallel above and B perpendicular above. In the preceding sections, we will be trying to find out the relationship connecting the perpendicular component of the magnetic field below and above the charge carrying sheet. We will also be finding out the connection between the parallel component of the magnetic field lying below the surface and above the surface. And when we do that, we have all the boundary conditions that the magnetic fields obey when they traverse a discontinuity. Our first objective will be to find out the boundary condition for the perpendicular component. We will begin with the divergence equation for the magnetic field that is del dot b equal to 0. In integral form, this could be written as integral b dot dA and this is equal to integral b dot n dA. This is equal to 0. Here, when we consider a small area element dA, the unit vector n will be along the outward drawn normal. Our next objective will be to choose a suitable shape for the area element dA. Considering the direction and symmetry of B perpendicular, a plausible choice of the area element for this problem will be what is known as a Gaussian pillbox. In this figure, a Gaussian pillbox enclosing the sheet is shown. A part of the box is above the sheet and the other part is below the sheet. And this box will have a finite area at its top and bottom faces, but its height or thickness along the sides would be negligibly small. In evaluating the line integral, we will choose the unit vectors as perpendicular to each of the faces of the Gaussian pillbox. In the next step, we shall try to find out the flux 
that is flowing out along every surface of the Gaussian pillbox. That is integral for the bottom phase b dot n dA for the bottom phase n is the unit vector that is pointing outward from the surface and that is pointing downward from the surface. For the bottom phase it is integral b dot n dA and then for the top phase the unit vector is pointed upward and we write the integral as top phase b dot n dA and for the four side phases that is one side is here one side is here one side is here and the other side is here and for the four side phases we may write this as side phases this is equal to zero the flux contribution from all the side phases is equal to zero this is because of the shape of the gaussian pillbox the gaussian pillbox is having a negligibly small thickness in that case the flux coming out from the sides of the gaussian pillbox can be neglected therefore this integral can be written as integral bottom phase b perpendicular below plus b parallel below dot n dA plus integral top phase b perpendicular above plus b parallel below dot n dA equal to 0 that is integral b perpendicular below then mod n cos pi dA plus integral b parallel below mod n cos pi by 2 dA plus integral b perpendicular below mod n cos 0 dA plus integral b parallel above mod n cos pi by 2 equal to 0. In this equation the second term is 0 as well as the fourth term is 0. This gives us negative of integral b perpendicular below dA plus integral b perpendicular above dA equal to 0. From where we will get the boundary condition for the perpendicular component as b perpendicular below equal to b perpendicular above. We conclude that the normal or the perpendicular component of the magnetic field across the boundary between two material regions is continuous. Instead of the magnetic flux density B, if we use the magnetic field intensity H, which are related as B equal to mu H, we have the boundary condition in terms of the magnetic field intensity, which goes like this. The normal or the perpendicular component of H across the boundary 
between two material regions is discontinuous if the permeabilities are unequal. Now we shall work on the boundary condition for the parallel component of the magnetic field. To calculate the boundary condition for the tangential component of the magnetic field, we shall use an Amperian loop running perpendicular to the current. We have the Ampere's law, integral B dot DL equal to mu zero I enclosed. We shall calculate the integral for different paths that is path 1, path 2, path 3 and path 4. We will write this integral for different paths as integral path 1 b dot dl plus integral along path 2 b dot dl plus integral along path 3 b dot dl plus integral along path 4 b dot dl and this is equal to mu zero times i enclosed. Assuming that the length of paths 2 and 4 infinitesimally small, we can approximate these contributions to 0. Therefore, we are left with integral for path 1 b perpendicular below plus b parallel below dot dl plus integral path 2 b perpendicular above plus b parallel above dot dl equal to mu zero times i enclosed that is integral path 1 b perpendicular below dl cos pi by 2 plus integral along path 1 b parallel below dl cos pi plus integral along path 3 b perpendicular above dl cos pi by 2 plus integral path 3 b parallel above dl cos 0 and this is equal to mu zero i enclosed. The first and the third terms become zero resulting in negative of b parallel below integral dl plus b parallel above integral dl equal to mu zero times I enclosed that is B parallel above minus B parallel below after integration let us assume that the length is L and that is equal to mu zero times enclosed current or B parallel above minus b parallel below equal to mu zero times i enclosed divided by l which is equal to mu zero times k 
or we'll get the boundary condition for the parallel component as b parallel above minus b parallel below equal to mu zero times k cross n we see that the parallel component of the magnetic field above and below the surface is discontinuous by an amount mu zero times k cross n that is a discontinuity in the tangential component of the magnetic field intensity at the boundary must be supported by surface current flowing in a direction perpendicular to this component of the field an important consequence is that if there is no surface current then the tangential component of the magnetic field intensity is continuous across the boundary in conclusion we have mathematically formulated the boundary conditions for the normal as well as the tangential components of the magnetic field below and above a discontinuity